Hello and welcome back to another episode of Generation Films. My name is American Ben, in case you forgot, and Harry Callahan is the worst damn cop I've ever seen. The Dirty Harry film series is legendary. As many of you know, save for the Gen Z whippersnappers out there who are all into feelings and stuff, it follows the exploits of the eponymous inspector Harry Callahan, a homicide detective for the San Francisco Police Department amidst a 1970s American urban landscape that's overrun with violent crime, often perpetrated by youths involved in gang culture. Just downstream from culture, of course, awaits the arts, within which the film industry churned out a bevy of movies that attempted to capture the fear and chaos that prevailed upon the city streets. Think Death Wish, for instance, but perhaps the most well-known among them is Dirty Harry and its sequels, basically Death Wish with a little less mustache. Callahan is notorious for his unorthodox policing methods, which see him confronting violent criminals by turning their ruthless tactics back against them. The proverbial taste of their own medicine, where the medicine is bullets. Someone watching the Dirty Harry series in the modern day may assume that the movies are actually attempting to make audiences question Harry's approach to policing, but actually, I think they're more straightforward than that. As Clint Eastwood himself said to the 1983 Field Guide to the Electronic Media, quote, a lot of critics thought Dirty Harry was sort of a right-wing film. It wasn't at all. It portrayed the circumstances that one guy was put into and showed the frustration with our courts and our judicial system, which is all very timely even today. The film was just ahead of itself. I try to say something very different in every film, and this one is about that frustration." End quote. In other words, the film was a conduit through which audiences beset and beleaguered by urban violence, and the impotence of authorities who effectively respond to it could vent their ire. Harry is meant as the hero, as he is taking on an inept system for the sake of delivering justice. He is the judge, jury, and executioner because the actual judges, juries, and executioners won't do their jobs. And listen, I'm all for ruining the pitfalls of bureaucratic rigmarole and ineptitude, and breaking the rules, especially when the rules suck, is sometimes the right thing to do in order to accomplish the necessary. I also very much feel for the people beholden to these post-apocalyptic urban nightmares characteristic of the 70s and beyond, but none of this changes the fact that Harry is just not an effective policeman, and worse, he sort of makes everything worse. Dirty Harry is a bad cop, and here's a bunch of reasons why. The first reason is poor gun safety and technique. Now, bear with me here because we're starting off with the less egregious offenses. As anybody who has ever been around firearms knows, there are three fundamental rules of gun safety. First, you do not ever point a gun at someone or something you are not going to destroy. Two, you always assume a gun is loaded unless you have checked it thoroughly. And three, you never put your finger on the trigger of a gun until you're ready to fire it. From the very first Dirty Harry film, it's clear that Harry has absolutely no respect for the unofficial rules of handling firearms. Here he is following the film's first big shootout, just jauntily perambulating the scene with his finger on the trigger of his gun. Shortly after that, during his famous you gotta ask yourself one question spiel delivered down upon his defeated foe, without actually double checking the chamber himself, he pulls the trigger of his gun to show the poor perp that indeed no rounds remain in pistol. This not only warrants that we declare Harry guilty of breaking two rules of gun safety, but brings to mind an additional fourth rule created just for Harry. Don't handle the gun like someone who works in personnel would. To personnel? That's for assholes. Harry never appears to adopt better gun safety throughout the series either. Here he is in the Enforcer chasing a suspect with what appears to be his finger on the trigger of his gun. Harry will also often shoot one-handed at times for absolutely no reason, and his groupings aren't anything to get excited about. Did I mention he's also been known to shoot at the range without ear protection? That doesn't really make him a bad cop, just makes him a moron. 
However, I do wonder if he fires with one hand at times, not because he thinks it's proper form, but because he's just showboating, which is the second reason he's a bad cop. He's seemingly more concerned with style at times than he is with doing his job efficiently. In the final film in the series, The Deadpool, during one scene, Harry confronts a group of armed thugs who are robbing a Chinese restaurant, and rather than dispatch the perps as quickly as possible, he first takes his time to deliver a witty line to a bad guy. You forgot your fortune cookie. What? Meanwhile, there's hostages and injured and dying people all around him who are in need of immediate assistance. I mean, his you gotta ask yourself one question speech isn't exactly a necessary prerequisite to apprehending the incapacitated criminal at his feet. You've got to ask yourself one question. Harry just launches into his unhinged soliloquy, presumably because he thinks it makes him sound cool. A third reason Harry makes for a sorry excuse for a law enforcement officer is that he's tactically inept and moreover, doesn't really think through his approach to crime scenes. Though as a caveat, he doesn't move particularly well and this may contribute to the dumb things he does amidst the chase. I mean, his agility matches that of a mid 90s Microsoft employee. Still, it's clear Harry's brain is not always engaged while he's on duty. In The Enforcer, after his partner Kate saves him by shooting an armed perp disguised as a nun in the back, Harry nonchalantly strolls over and picks up the nun's gun, thus adding his fingerprints to the weapon in a time when security cameras are not exactly ubiquitous. This is highly impetuous on Harry's part and seriously dumb. However, again, more than just the random idiotic things he does during confrontations with criminals, it's his tactical incompetence in such situations that really astounds me. Actually, he really doesn't appear to employ any deliberate tactics when facing down armed enemies. He always just seems to rely on the wishful thinking that the bad guys will miss me. And somehow they almost always do. Miss him, that is, because his plot armor is more durable than Necron Necrodermis. <sighs> guys, this is mainly a sci-fi channel that remains true even to this day. If you don't get that reference, it's on you and your heresy is deplorable. Anyway, of course, Harry's impenetrable plot armor is not shared by his partners who do bear the brunt of his slipshod tactical mind. In The Enforcer, despite what we're made to believe, it's not Kate Moore's inexperience or innocence that gets her killed, it's Harry's incompetence and recklessness. Ask yourself, does it really have nothing to do with Harry that all of his partners either die or get gravely wounded. In The Enforcer, without alerting his superiors, Harry mounts an attack on Alcatraz, a defunct prison where the People's Revolutionary Strike Force, a terrorist organization, is hiding out. As far as I can tell, there's no reason to believe his superiors would not greenlight an organized assault on the prison, employing a proper strategy and tech. I mean, the PRSF is holding the mayor hostage. Harry goes ahead anyway, though, and yes, his decision gets his partner killed. It isn't clear anyone has to die in this situation, at least among the good guys, in order to save the mayor. Actually, it's a miracle Harry hasn't shot one of his partners himself, as he also frequently fires clumsily and blind from his revolver. He loves to expose himself on approach to enemies who are better covered and outnumber him. And he often fails to recognize more optimal strategies when they couldn't be more obvious and instead proceeds to do things the hard way, like in the Deadpool car chase scene when at multiple points, he could get out of his car and escape the remote control car bomb on foot by, you know, going up some steps or going through a door. But these examples are honestly still the lesser evils among Dirty Harry's broader conduct. Starting unnecessary firefights with civilians in the way, however, is not. And this is our fourth reason Harry sucks. As a matter of fact, Harry's favorite pastime is shooting through civilians. If a civilian isn't in his line of sight, I almost feel like he'd find one drag that person into the path of crossfire, and then shoot. Harry is guilty of this behavior in every Dirty Harry film. In the beginning of the first movie, when the criminals are robbing a bank, 
Harry just starts firing at the perps from a distance, one-handed, and without even really trying to aim, into an area flooded with civilians. Actually, the only people in this scene with guns who don't fire towards civilians are the robbers. Later in the film, Harry and his partner stake out atop a building at night and then get into a long-range firefight with a serial killer, Scorpio, who proceeds to send automatic fire back their way. Shooting into the dark like this, as in engaging in a rapid-fire, long-distance, mostly blind gun battle mid-city, could get dozens of people killed. Worse yet, Harry's riling up of Scorpio leads the maniacal killer to flee and murder a police officer. Later, towards the end of a confrontation with Scorpio in a park, Harry, while lying on the ground, fires shots into the darkness ahead as the killer scurries off. This is another instance in which Harry's bullets could easily hit an innocent bystander. There are, after all, people in the park at this time, as we see on Harry's way up to the meeting point set by Scorpio. Then, when Scorpio hijacks a bus full of kids, what does our ingenious tactician do? He stands on an overpass, waits for the bus to travel under it, and jumps on top as it goes by. Badass move? Yes, props. Stupid as hell? Absolutely. Also, jumping on top of the bus causes Scorpio to go mad, start firing away from inside the vehicle, take over the wheel, and drive recklessly. Harry's action thus puts the kids in even more danger than they're already in. To be fair to Harry though, just minutes later, he does do something extremely ethical. After disposing of Scorpio, he chucks his police badge into the river, a step his superior officer should have taken a long time ago, and a move that can only be described as a boon to the entire city of San Francisco and humanity more broadly. But I digress. Harry loves putting people on buses in danger. In sudden impact, when he could commandeer, you know, a Porsche in pursuit of a robber, he instead opts for a retirement home shuttle. The chase causes the suspect behind the wheel to fire his gun back at the bus. Rather than stop his pursuit, given that senior citizens are aboard, Harry continues to pursue the suspect, putting all of the geezer's lives at risk and creating a dangerous situation for the innocent bystanders in the path of the action. Actually, Harry is generally prone to doing dumb things behind the wheel. In Magnum Force, when two hijackers take over a plane full of passengers, which is docked at the airport, Rather than wait for the FBI to arrive, Harry decides to disguise himself as a pilot and board the aircraft in order to confront the hijackers and retake the plane. Despite not knowing how to fly, he drives the plane down the runway, risking the lives of all those on board, and worse, he risks angering the hijackers. He successfully takes down the hijacker in the cockpit and arms himself, but then, in a classic Harry move, he runs back to the cabin and instigates a firefight with the hijacker in the middle of the aisle. Yes, with passengers in the way. Harry's fave. Without getting involved, it's not clear that anyone ever fires a shot. Then, in The Enforcer, Harry confronts a bunch of robbers in a convenience store to ascertain their demands. They ask for a getaway car and for the cops to leave. They say they'll take two hostages with them and that if Harry doesn't follow their orders exactly, they'll start shooting. Harry then drives his car into the convenience store, causing a robber to shoot at him. Harry's actions spark a firefight that destroys the store and could easily lead to everyone involved getting killed. Only plot armor keeps him and the others alive. In the next scene, Harry's commanding officer scolds him for his reckless actions, and the officer is completely right to do so. What would you want me to do, yell trick or treat at him? Harry just cannot understand anything but extremes. To Harry, there's only two methods of policing. Do nothing and let murderers walk free, or go in guns blazing and mow down everyone from savage killers to misbehaved children. One of my favorite of Harry's special moments takes place in Sudden Impact, when a bunch of robbers attempt to stick up a diner. As they're about to execute their plan, and before there's any chance at a peaceful resolution to the matter, Harry busts in and, with civilians in the middle of the hoopla, starts firing away, when it isn't even clear that the robbers actually intend to harm anyone. Maybe they do, of course, but there's a reason police use negotiation tactics before just storming into a hostile situation. It's not because they're incompetent, but because the latter approach is very likely to result in civilian bloodshed. Harry is the type of guy to save a kitten stuck in a tree 
by burning down the tree and all the homes around it. The kitten would be naught but ashes and Harry would be there thanking himself for protecting society from trees. Harry does so many unnecessary and stupid things in his film series that you'd be hard pressed to find him behaving competently for a period lasting longer than 60 seconds at any point during any of the Dirty Harry movies. During the big shootout towards the end of Magnum Force, Harry jumps onto the hood of fleeing mobster Frank Palancio's car. I have no idea what this is supposed to accomplish. He could just let the other cops in the vicinity who are in cars chase Palancio down. Just minutes later in the same film, Harry discovers a bomb in his apartment mailbox. Knowing that his neighbor slash sometimes living girlfriend Sonny checks this box, he leaves the bomb there and walks away, a choice that almost results in his girlfriend blowing herself up. I'm also not sure Harry should be the one tasked with defusing the bomb in this situation either, but hell, why not? Go for it, Harry. After all, you did stay at a Holiday Inn Hotel last night. Finally, and fifth among his manifold shortcomings, Harry is wantonly violent. Yes, towards bad guys. As at the end of Magnum Force, when Harry arms a bomb and throws it into his superior's car. Briggs may be corrupt, which Harry knows at this point, but I'm not sure that's a good reason to murder him as he runs away. But I digress. Worse yet, Harry is lustfully violent towards non-violent offenders and witnesses. In The Enforcer, he chokes an escort to extract information from her about the PRSF, and he does so without even trying to explain himself and why he needs such information first. Earlier in the film, Harry shows up on scene at a restaurant where a man who's notorious for faking medical episodes is faking a heart attack. Amidst the man's histrionics and without much hesitation, Harry unleashes a barrage of kicks on him. Yeah, the guy is a lowlife and a known con artist, but I'm not sure this warrants that Harry should beat him. Moreover, can you imagine what a headache Harry is for the SFPD? I mean, he's a walking lawsuit magnet. Listen, effective policing sometimes requires violence, but it also almost always requires restraint, of which Harry has none. And thus the entire police force's reputation suffers due to his disregard for rules and ethics. Harry may be the reason that serial killer Scorpio is apprehended and removed from the streets in the first Dirty Harry film, but because he beats the already neutralized killer and neglects to read him his rights upon apprehending him, Harry is also the reason that Scorpio is let off scot-free and is returned to the same streets. In my estimation, there's very little reason to believe the streets of San Francisco are safer due to the police work of Detective Harry Callahan. Does he breed fear among criminals? Probably, but that fear doesn't seem to dissuade the city's felons from their nefarious behavior. Rather, it provokes them to further, more aggressive violence time and time again. Harry confronts bad actors who put the innocent in danger by, yes, taking down such actors. But in the course of doing so, he frequently heightens the danger to said innocent people. Now, don't get me wrong. Harry is brave and noble, and he's a dogged police officer but he's not an effective police officer or public servant. He does not make civilians safer at large, and it seems the only defense ever put forth to justify his unorthodox and violent tactics seems to be that, quote unquote, he gets the job done where the authorities do not. But does he? Well, in my view, without his unprecedentedly durable plot armor, no way that's true. Actually, without such armor, there would probably be mass death on Earth. Anyways, that's my take on Dirty Harry. Really excited to hear where you disagree with me and what your opinions overall are. Please do comment down below. If you enjoyed the video, do give it one of those big thumbs up. Remember to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell. Does YouTube still do that? It's been a while. So you don't miss a damn thing. For now, my name is American Ben, and I'll catch you next time. Generation. Films. Ooh, been a while. Peace.